Call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee to order for Monday, January 7th, 2019. It's about 7.03 uh, p.m. Good evening all, and Happy New Year. Happy nice year. to see you. And nice to see you, and let's, let's, hope it's a, let's hope it's a great year. Let's hope that 2019 can be a little bit better than what 2018 was, and let's hope that we can uh, finally start to see some peace in this country and we move forward instead of some of the other games that are being played. But uh, in any case, uh, that being said, we'll we'll have a full agenda here, I believe, in the uh, in, you know in the course of the year in itself. But before we begin, I, I just want to take a couple of moments because if if not, I will forget. Anesthesiology le left me sleeping too long. There's sometimes when you start to forget things, so I don't want. While I'm bright and alert right now, I want to I want to just uh, make mention of a couple housekeeping matters um, uh, that uh, I think we just uh, need to tend to. But it'll be better now than at, at the end. But I don't want to take time. This will be my last meeting as chairman of the uh, Finance Committee. Um, it's been a great pleasure to have served as the president, uh, city council president for the year 2018. I appreciate uh, the support and, and uh, the help that uh, my colleagues gave me during the past year. Um, uh, tremendous support that they also showed when I was out for five or six weeks. Uh, tremendous support from my, uh, my uh, colleague, the uh, immediate past president, as he still is, and, and he filled in for me when I was out uh, but uh, I appreciate um, all the well wishes um, as uh, people see me even even to now say, you know, hope you're feeling better and doing good and, and I am and I appreciate that. Um, but I do want to take time because we forget some people that, that you know, really help behind the scenes, you know. It's, it's like, you know, Good Morning America just isn't put together because of Robin Roberts and Michael Strahan and all, you know, and George, uh, um, what's his name? Because he doesn't enlighten me that much. But, um, you know, there is a, there is a team that's behind that helps us, and I do want to take time to thank. Um, I know Mel is out sick this uh, this evening, but I want to thank. Um, I want to thank Connie for her support this past year. I know she was with us for a small bit, and then moved into a different position, but doing a good job there. I do want to thank Erin. Um, she's come into the position in the last three months, and she's done a. She's done an omens. She's done an omens job, and, and I'm sure uh, you'll do fine with the, uh, the new council president as well. Um, and I know Beatty, um, I had spoken to Beatty before she had left. She moved to California, and um, I hope she's doing well out there, too. Um, I, I do also want to take time to thank um, you know, the deputy superintendent of schools and, and Ken Thompson, director of, of buildings, school buildings, for all the times we had to move around and they worked with me um, in doing so and making sure that we were you know, at a comfort level and you know, here we are now. We're still here um, and hopefully we won't be here for you know, much, much longer. But I do want to just take time um, also because probably uh, won't be here at, at the end, but uh, I also want to thank, uh, I know Nick is here from the, the mayor's office, Nick's the uh, chief of staff to, to Mayor Carpenter and I want to thank Nick because Nick and I worked uh, very well to get together when he came on uh, as the chief of staff and uh, You're not dying, right? you know no what's that You're not dying. no but I just want to thank people I believe in thanking people I know, but just yeah okay sure. yeah. well if I'm taking too long that's no, too no. bad you sound like you're leaving or something I'm not going anywhere I'm gonna be watching you there's no will but I just I just also want to touch base to thank thank Nick because he does a great job in the mayor's office and I do want to just stretch out uh, uh, for whatever it's worth or whatever people have to say, um, there is a mayor of the city of Brockton and, and we all get along to a point and we all talk with one another. We agree and disagree. It's all part of the process, but uh, the mayor and I, um, you know, came together this year and, and tried to do what we could in the best interest of keeping the city going. And I thank Mayor Carpenter uh, for all that and I hope that you, President-elect, continue to have uh, the meetings as well because I think it's well worth it. How it works out, it works out, but that's how, that's how it goes. Um, Elevator, elevator is still in the process. Um, there's still a couple of hiccups, but I think you're going to see that taken care of, and, and hopefully in, in the opening, uh, um, sometime in January, maybe beginning of February. But I think more January is what uh, the com commission was telling me today when I was in uh, when I was in City Hall. Um, and I also, um, being the condition I was in, I did climb the stairs and I made it up to the City Council Committee Room which is in the process of being painted. Um, the table was refurbished today. There's gonna be some other new furnishings coming. Um, so there'll be a different look in the committee room and I pointed out all of the things that I just said. It's almost like get rid of that junk and just I pointed. So let's hope that it goes gone because I'll get yelled at from the clerk, but that's okay. 
Um, the sound system, we need to have a meeting and we need to get that, um, get that really rocking and rolling. Uh, that's something that you and I are going to have to talk about um, in the next week or so so we can put everybody together in, um, in a room and get that done. And then the last thing, I'll just conclude just by indicating that uh, interviews will be continuing this week um, for the CFO position. Uh, it's narrowed down to, I believe, six candidates that are going to be coming before us between Wednesday and Friday. And um, at that point in time, we'll narrow it down so the mayor has something to work with um, within the next couple of weeks. So uh, that's a position that, um, you know, has, has to be filled. But it's n it's not going to be filled with, uh, you know. Hopefully, I, I hope it's filled with somebody that's got the same caliber of the person that's leaving. But um, that's not that's not been said yet. So, um, with that being said, you have a revised agenda in front of you. Um, I believe it is only because we just added a couple of names. But before we even do that, just a couple of um, things with the agenda. Item number one, um, Madam Clerk, you want to read item number one? Appointment of Tanya Tillman of 1092 North Main Street, Brockton, to the Elections Commission for a term of four years. Invited Tanya Tillman, Cynthia Scrivani, Executive Director, Elections. And Tanya sent us an, an email and could not uh, uh, be present uh, here this evening. She is out of town, so at this point I would look for that to have a motion to be postponed to the postponed next finance. Second. Motion been made and second that we postpone to the next finance committee meeting. All in favor of that? Opposed, that'll be, and it should be January 22nd, which would be a Tuesday. Remember, uh, Martin Luther King Day is the 21st. Um, we can now go down, I just want to go down to item um, number four. Uh, if you read item number four, Madam Clerk. Appointment of Donald Dobbins of 21 Hemlock Street, Brockton, as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited, Donald Dobbins. Information was given me to me this afternoon as well as, uh, as a, a phone call when I met with the, with the mayor too this afternoon that the gentleman has um, withdrawn his name from um, this position. So motion I would, the table. Second. motion's been made and, and seconded to table. All in favor of that? Opposed? That item has been uh, tabled. We will now go to item number two, Madam Clerk. Appointment of Jane Parker of 46 Linnea Ave, Brockton, to the Elections Commission for a term of four years. Invited Jane Parker, Cynthia Scrivani, Executive Director of Elections. Thank you. I see her. She's coming down the line right here. Good evening, Jane. How are you? Good. 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 Yourself? Anything you'd like to say to, to the council? Uh, nope, just coming to hopefully help out with the uh, city of Brockton. Okay. Cynthia, any, anything you'd like to mention at all in regards to the appointment you made? Well, Jane has been a resident of Brockton for 13, 13 years. She is very interested in becoming involved in helping out with the uh, with the elections and um, it, with helping out her city. Okay. So I think she would be a good fit. Um, she is a registered Democrat and she is a cit citizen of Brockton, so. Very good, thank you. Question, Council Cruz. Thank you, just a question. question uh, you did mention that she's a Democrat, so I see if we're appointing two, uh, the elections commission is made up of five members or four? Four. Four, and uh, who is not coming back? Catherine Mallard and um, and Henry Sylvia. Uh, I'm going to be finished. Okay. Are finished, and they're both Democrats. Okay, thank you. That's, uh, and good luck, and uh, thank you. just make sure you spell our names right when okay. we... Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Favorable recommendation. Um, motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Oppose? Goes back to the full city thank council. Thank you. Thank you. Go to item number three. Appointment of Eugene S. Marrow of 128 Healy Terrace, Brockton, as an alternate to the Brockton License Commission for a term of three years. Invited, Eugene S. Marrow. Mr. Marrow. I don't want to put it down there, but hey. Price is right, price is wrong. <laughs> I 
Mr. Merrill, how are you this evening? I'm fine, thank you. No, no, no stranger to some of us or all of us, to be truthful with you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Pleasure to be seen. Um, anything you'd like to say uh, to the council at all? Or? Yes, just briefly, I'd like to first of all thank Mayor Carpenter for giving me an opportunity to serve on the License Commission, especially in memory of my brother Harold Bo Merrill, who was on the commission. And I'd like to uh, thank the councilors uh, also and congratulate Moses for his uh, election to uh, president of the council. Very good. Any other? With that, I'd like to make a motion to make a favorable recommendation. Second. <laughs> Motions were made and second to send back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed, it goes back to the city council with a favorable recommendation. And thank you, and we appreciate you for stepping in, and I'm sure you do just as just as fine a job as your brother did. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. Thank you. It. Madam Clerk, we'll go to item number five. Order that the following named sum be, and the same is hereby appropriated as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Total appropriation of $165,000 from stabilization fund, $165,000. To law department property purchase for the acquisition of the 34 Cottage Street property. It is intended that this property will be for the benefit of, this, of the Council on Aging. <coughs> Invited, Honorable Mayor William Carpenter, Karen Crevel, Budget Director Finance, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, Janice Fitzgerald, Director of Council on Aging. Councilors, just before we take this particular um, item, I, I, I did ask the, um, the Mayor if he would um, give us just, it's just a synopsis of um, the Rock Stadium in Shaw Center to where we're at, and it's not for discussion purposes, no Q&A. It's just him giving a synopsis to us because he did send us an email today um, on the tour that I, with him and, and some other department heads, went on on Friday morning for uh, about an hour. We both didn't climb the roof, though, but we uh, we did go through uh, pretty much the whole stadium and, uh, uh, and the conference center. So it's just, again, it's just brief. That's it. No question, no Q&A. Um, and then we'll probably within the next three or four weeks where it's located in my ward, I'll get together with the mayor, we'll file a resolve and, and move forward when he has much more further information to talk about where we need to go here. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Well, good evening, Mr. President. Good evening, Councilors. Happy New Year, everybody. <clears throat> I did momentarily consider going up on the roof, but I wasn't sure who I could trust to hold the ladder for me, so. <laughs> 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 so I nixed that one. Um, as uh, w was notified to the council last week, uh, last week the city did take control and possession of the Shaw Stadium Campanelli Shaw Center Campanelli Stadium complex. Uh, the Brockton 21st Century Corporation that uh, has been the longtime um, custodian of the property. Uh, provided us with paperwork on December 31st, uh, acknowledging a default on their loan agreement with the city and voluntarily turning over the, uh, basically the keys uh, to the city. Um, they did so in a very positive, cooperative uh, nature and uh, have pledged to work with the city for a smooth transition. Uh, the first step of that process uh, was on Friday uh, when Mr. Gallerani, uh, the former executive director of the B-21, who has been their point person in the stadium for the last three or four years, uh, met us at the property on Friday to provide a walkthrough of the, uh, both the Shaw Center and the stadium, an initial look, primarily uh, for the benefit of the building commissioner and some of his tradespeople, and also for the facilities uh, department of the school department, who I believe will be looking to for some assistance uh, with the uh, at least the short-term maintenance of the facility. Um, I did, uh, Mr. Casseri did send me an email today that I forwarded to the council with his. Uh, punch list of immediate items that he feels need to be addressed. And these are not long-term fixes. These are simply uh, to use his phrase, to seal the envelope of, of the buildings, present 
uh, prevent any further deterioration or damage, um, stop the roof from leaking, uh, prevent freezing of pipes during the winter, that type of thing. Um, and so that I did share with the council today and I think those are mostly things that can be performed um, by the city. At the same time, he has initiated uh, taking a good hard look at what the major immediate capital needs are to bring the facility back to the condition that it should be in. And um, there was a report, a survey prepared for the B-21 about three years ago that took an extensive look at capital needs. And I think that's probably a starting point, but obviously there have been additional changes over the past three years since that report was compiled. So I've asked Mr. Kasiri to prepare for us uh, an analysis of what he thinks are the immediate capital improvements that must be made, major systems that cannot be allowed to go any further. And it, as example, things like roofs, HVAC, leaking water, things of that sort um, that need to be addressed. I, uh, I believe a reasonable timeline for that is maybe two to three weeks. He really needs to bring in some different specialists in different areas, have someone come in and take a good look at the HVAC, uh, et cetera, and uh, for him to compile that report to the council. Uh, I would like to schedule an opportunity for the council to tour the full facility with Mr. Kasseri. Um, my suggestion would be if you could give him a couple of weeks to put that initial analysis together, I think the tour might be far more beneficial to the council with the opportunity to have some initial recommendations in front of you and ask to be shown and have the opportunity to look at some of the various issues that have been outlined to you. Um, I had a conversation with the uh, incoming council president suggested you know if we needed to do that on a Saturday uh, to accommodate the various schedules of the councilors we certainly will accommodate that um, and as we've done many other tours we may want to do a couple times through so that we don't bring a quorum through at once uh, or the other option would be for the council to post a meeting but um, we do want to make it available to you um, as soon as possible to have a chance to go through and look at it. Um, but I think it would be much more helpful if we could have some initial recommendations from Mr. Kasseri. Um, I My belief is that we need a short-term plan to make sure that we preserve the asset, regardless of whatever the highest and best future use of the facility turns out to be. There's no scenario where it does not make sense for the city to restore the asset to good working order and to preserve it. And so I think that we would work with the council on a short-term plan for 2019. I believe that some of these fixes that are going to be immediately necessary will take a little time, particularly in light of the fact that we have to be aware now that the city has taken back possession anything that we do over there is subject to procurement. So some of these larger ticket items first are going to have to be brought to the council for approval, but then subsequently have to go through a procurement process which takes a couple months. Um, so it's, it's going to take a little time to complete everything that needs to be done just because of the time frame of procurement. Um, so I would look very much forward to in the near future coming back uh, with Mr. Kasiri with some type of presentation for you and to also at the same time work with the incoming council president uh, for a scheduling of a tour uh, of the facility for the council. Okay. Thank you. Thank Fair you. Fair enough. Mayor. Okay. That's okay. fine. That's great. Appreciate it. Uh, so the item is uh, the item Cottage is Street. Cottage Street now we're, we're there with $165,000. Yep. So, so we have ahead. quite a few people here. Uh, that can be of assistance on the Cottage Street acquisition. I'll just try to lay it out for you, set the ground uh, work here, and then we can uh, bring up whoever you'd like to ask questions of. Um, as you're probably aware, the Council on Aging for some time now has been seeking to 
expand uh, the the COA, the, the Mary Cruz Kennedy Center. And um, I don't think there's any doubt or question that we do need to expand the capacity for a city the size of Brockton. The facility is undersized. Our senior population continues to grow. And to, to be able to provide the types of programming and services we need to provide, we, we, we need to make it larger. Um, the COA, through both their board and their building committee, has been working very diligently at this to come up with a plan. I think that that has really um, come together over the last few months uh, to the point that they're ready to go forward. The uh, building committee of the COA came to me recently uh, identifying this particular property on Cottage Street and requesting that the city acquire the property for the purpose of creating additional parking. Parking is already an issue with the COA at its current size, and an expansion of the COA will not be possible unless we can create some additional parking in the immediate area. Um, so that is the, uh, the request and the intent. I believe that even right now, prior to an expansion of the COA, there is an immediate need for additional parking. It is within a block of the Superior Courthouse. It's within a block of the Y along with being within a block of the COA. And we know that both the, the courthouse and the Y, along with the COA, none of them have sufficient parking. So I think there is an immediate need for parking in that area. Um, you know, there's another point I'd like to make before I turn it over to them. Oh, I think it's also important for you to be aware that our state legislative delegation has been also working very hard on seeking funding for the addition to the COA. Um, Representative Cassidy is, is the lead, uh, but with the full support of the entire delegation. And uh, just very recently, at the end of December, Representative Cassidy was successful in having a uh, $2 million allocation for an expansion of the COA included in the bond bill that was passed and signed right at the end of the year. Now that, to make sure everyone understands, that does not make the money immediately available. There's still more work to do, but it is a huge step in the right direction. And that means now the, the continuing work is to get it into the budget, get it through the legislature, and I, I have a lot of confidence in our delegation uh, to be able to do that and, and obviously we'll be lobbying the administration simultaneously. So I think that we can see the funding for this addition on the horizon, um, but we do need to address the parking situation. I also know as we go up to the Hill with our delegation to lobby for the funding for this, that if we're going up there asking for a $2 million allocation to build an addition, We've got to be, the city has to be willing to put a little skin in the game also. And as this um, critical need for parking has been identified, this is an opportunity for the city to be able to acquire the parking, which I think will make our case even stronger up on Beacon Hill to show that the city's fully committed to the, the COA expansion going forward. So with that, we have uh, members of the COA here in the building committee, Attorney Nesrallah, um, so whoever you'd like to ask questions of, uh, we'll make them available. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council <coughs> Cruz, Thank you have you. a question? Um, I'll ask the questions and then whoever can answer them okay. best. Obviously, even if we weren't doing the addition, the parking is a, a nightmare over there. So I assume this is the corner, the house that's on the corner and surrounded by the St. Patrick's parking lot, correct? Yes. Okay. It was formerly a church, formerly no, a temple. No, it's not. Oh, so no, we're, which, which one? No. Well, help me with the one. Which one? Do we have okay, good. That's what I'm asking. So this is the church up. Okay. Right. The former church, former temple. Okay. So it's up a little ways. Okay. Yeah. It's three. I think it's three lots up from the one that you described. Okay. So 165 purchase. What's it going to cost us to knock the building down? So I spoke with Mr. Casseri. He's given me a preliminary estimate of 40000 and said that that is probably plus or minus 10000 depending what there is for um, potential hazardous materials inside the building. Based upon the age of the building, he's assuming 
we're going to see asbestos with piping and asbestos around the boil and that type of stuff and that is factored in but 50 on the high side 30 on the low side okay. but 40 probably being a best estimate right now until we get in there and see exactly what's in right. there and then we need to once we build that parking lot we're gonna have to fence it off and gate it otherwise it's just gonna become a courthouse parking lot that we uh, are gonna be fighting with them every, every day so we is there any thought of the parking authority taking some money from them and running having them run it yeah but the lots so council we have had some conversations um, I think that the recommendation at this point that it be under the control of the Council on Aging um, with the parking authority all of their other parking in the downtown is pay parking so I think it would create a dilemma for the parking authority how to have this one lot available and maintained without charging for parking there when all the other parking downtown is pay parking um, we're willing to examine that issue more fully but that I, I did have a conversation with mr. Malley and um, it's not that there's not a willingness of the parking authority to help us but I think we'd have to resolve this issue as to justifying how the parking authority is doing the same investment and maintenance upkeep on that lot and not charging to park there when all the other downtown parking is either by permit or meter yeah in I, terms of within the parking authority lots no I get that but we may need to look at that just because once we take all these steps you know we can't really have the council on aging trying to be the ones to to police and operate the lot no, because it's gonna have to be I would assume gated or yeah. something just because otherwise we're gonna every morning at 830 we're gonna no. be up there towing cars out of there I, I agree with you um, I think that in looking at this the best analogy I could come up with and I know Councilor Sullivan, Councilor Yanieri, and maybe you, Councilor Cruz, were on the council long enough. A number of years ago, the city acquired an old house on a parcel right next to the War Memorial Building um, because we had the lot on one mm -hmm. side, we had the War Memorial on the other side, but we didn't control the parcel in the middle. In the middle, the Chin's house. And, right, and by the city acquiring that parcel, it allowed us to put a driveway in next to the war memorial that Im improved the handicap access and it also allowed us to connect the parking lot to the building uh, which made it much more feasible to use this is not exactly the same situation right. but i think it's a similar situation right. where we've got the facility and we need some additional parking and there's an opportunity right now to acquire a specific piece of property that could fill that bill yeah i mean I, it's obviously we're going to move forward with this it's just a matter of how we make sure it works best and in fact, I have a lot in common with that house because I have three chins in it now, myself too. <laughs> but uh, I mean, obviously, I believe we'll be moving forward with this. But I think it's something that we can look at with the parking authority yeah. because we don't want the council on aging to have the responsibility no. for operating it. I agree. In my and opinion, it's just uh, Mr. Malley indicated that um, he was receptive to the conversation and felt that the authority board would be also, and perhaps that's somewhere with a. Maybe the lawyers can draw up some type of memorandum or agreement or something agreement, exactly. that would allow us to have the parking authority provide some Plus, services. you know, they have some money, so. I, I that, mean, that notion crossed my mind, yeah, too, exactly. Counselor. So, yeah. I mean, even just when it comes to plowing and, and clearing. Uh, do you know how many spaces we'll be able to put in there? 16 to 18. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank that's you. Thank that's you. our estimate based upon the size. So, I, some of these questions now, I think the... the the building committee of the COA is far more equipped to handle some of these questions than I am. Well, you you understand it's the church, not the yeah, house. Yeah, no, I do not. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because yeah. I heard you say the house. Right. Yeah. 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 Maybe they corrected me. Yeah. Eventually, as I mentioned, the mayor will hopefully sometime down the line, the house will be something that will be right. that goes away too. I would. I would right. Hope. So but I, I yeah, think is that. Is the brown house on McCoy you're talking about? Yeah, but it's not the house. No, it's no, the no, no, yeah, no, exactly. No, yeah, no, yeah, that that house. needs to. Yeah, this yeah. is the whole exactly. Go into a whole corner. Right. Yep. We've got to get the Ward 2 Councilor working again, and then we can, you know. And I believe certainly in terms of acquiring the property, uh, this has got to be an appropriation by the City Council. Uh, we believe that looking at the language in the vacant abandoned building ordinance, there may be an opportunity to use that fund specifically for the cost of raising the building, which Actually, could, save, could save us some taxpayer funds. One last question for the Finance Director. Well, how much money is presently in the uh, stabilization fund? Mm -hmm. 
Good evening, um, good evening counselors. Good evening. Um, as of December 12, 2018, we had $4.7 million dollars available. Thank you. I'm all set. Thank you. Yeah. Council follow you had a question. I guess I can ask the council on aging. Uh, I, I looked at all of your agendas and I looked at the minutes of the meeting. Is this something that the council has fully discussed and voted on? Because I can't find that. Good evening. Um, no, it has not been voted on. Okay. My next question would be, is this parking that would be created if this building, if this property were purchased and the building removed, is that for people at the COA or is it for another entity to park there, freeing up parking at the convent on Father Kenny Way? So if I if you would allow me to have Mr. Landerholm come in and maybe explain that a little bit better for you, if that would be allowed. Uh, uh, yeah. which, which aspect of it? The, the, uh, the YMCA or the, the, the YMCA as a aspect of it or the parking or which, what, what part is he going to handle on you? in general and the YMCA. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm the chairman of the building committee. Okay. And in the uh, desire to make sure that we had the appropriate parking. To go ahead with the construction, we needed at least 26 <coughs> more spaces without involving the parking lot that is controlled by the Y, because the Y has not bought the property yet. It's still owned by South Shore Housing. Yep. And the desire to get this project in motion allows us to uh, utilize an existing foundation that was put in grandfathered with the vision that the property was going to be expanded at some point in time. Well, it's been outgrown now and uh, there is not sufficient backing. What I had a conversation with uh, Vin Matarano today in relation to uh, the cooperative manner that the Y would give us and they bought the property on the corner of White and Montello, and that was going to be their employee parking lot so they weren't crossing the street. The condition of the property itself is uh, severely underwater. This is at White Avenue and Montello? No, th that's uh, the property that they're going to create a parking lot. Okay. On. The amount of uh, parking spaces that would uh, clear it's a row of trees now with a fence that did separate the uh, school when it was there. In this conversation, he's more than willing to uh, get his project underway because they've got a lot going. Uh, I don't want to disclose because it was uh, privately held, but they have a plan uh, to use the uh, Sampson funeral home lot for their parking for the time being because they, they don't have any services. Uh, the, the lease is all but up and things are going to change drastically. Right, so I guess, I, I guess I'm going back to my original question. If the building at 34 Cottage Street were purchased mm -hmm. and if that were turned into a parking lot, yep. is it the representation that we will have COA visitors park there? Yes. Or and, and then walk down to the COA? That's correct. Okay, so it's it's strictly for COA parking, not for any other reason? Strictly COA. Okay. Do we have any written agreement with the Y with respect to what they may or may not let us do? Is there anything in writing? There is nothing in writing because they don't have, they have a management authority, but South Shore Housing, which is in the process of being sold to the Y, yeah has uh, an appraised value of the property is at 1.4 million. The debt is 2.25 million. So they, they've got to work out a lot of details because there were six separate grants that were granted South Shore Housing to create it. So they've got a lot of cleaning up to do financially before they can uh, change ownership. And on top of that, the migration of uh, contaminants from the uh, Sims Tire site is following the aquifer to the river. 
and is passing through this land that is uh, partially under the blacktop. But if we're not going to build anything on it, it's, it's acceptable. It doesn't have to be remediated. Just so that you have a visual, that that's in red is proposed to be the addition. It's 9,000 square feet. It will accommodate an additional 275 <coughs> to 300 over what you have there now. But, but, the, did, but did we just not find out that you're in a floodplain and you're only three feet above, I don't know whether it's the river or the brook, and then, in other words, have we not reached a point where we have to be careful what we do there simply because of the possibility of a floodplain problem? We have advanced to the Corps of Engineers because they are responsible for all waterways. We have requested, a, it's called a buttress wall. It is an additional six feet and that takes it out of the floodplain. Carl, could you watch the mic? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> in any event, the, uh, that whole general area is in the floodplain. And the uh, Corps of Engineers is going to look at it favorably because the bank on the south side of the river is much higher than it is on the uh, north side of the river. So putting a buttress wall would be the expense of the Fed, not the city. And it would have an earth berm from the uh, two foot down from the top onto the, uh, the ground so that water would not penetrate in the area. But, but we don't have a commitment in writing from them yet, correct? No, we do not. Okay, now I have another question and that is, and someone can answer this for me, why would we pay $165,000 for a piece of property that sold in February of this past year for 150? Why, why, why would we, if it, it, it was sold and then the gentleman who bought it, who I understand is a pastor, found out that the building was so compromised he couldn't remodel it and it would have to be demolished. So why would we take money that's really the property of the taxpayers and pay $15,000 more than that which was paid six or eight months before the mayor signed the purchase and sale agreement? The answer that I feel is correct for that resolve was the packing that was necessary to uh, be grandfathered into the foundations that I had mentioned that were already in the ground. It was built on the floodplain to begin with, and known to be, but they said it'll be all right. So the foundations are already there. If we have the parking, we can go through the uh, building permit process, the bidding process, and because this is, it's a, a city agency, so we've got to go by all of the specifications of getting an architect and the uh, bidding of uh, the actual work. So this was saving us a lot of time. That's the and, reason. And whoever can answer this, once you take that building down, there's going to have to be site prep because you're going to have to come in and pave it. Yeah. And I would think that if you pave it, you're going to dramatically change the drainage in that area because now you're just going to have a, a complete area that's, that's basically covered with macadam and that could affect neighbors. I, I would think there's going to have to be some engineering studies to determine where we might need drainage. Does anyone have any idea how much that engineering review and site prep might cost because it, it looks to me, Carl, as if we're getting up to minimum $300,000 for 16 to 18 parking spots. There's 26 parking spots that are capable because of the size of the lot with a center core that allows you to turn in and out. Okay, for, for 26, that's true because it's about a 6,500 square foot lot. Each parking space has to be by ordinance 180 square feet. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like simple mathematics. But So for 26 parking spots in an area where we're not sure if the Council on Aging is going to build an addition yet, we're now up to $300,000, roughly, and ongoing maintenance and fencing. And I, I'm just having trouble wrapping my head around this. And, I, and the other thing I'm having trouble wrapping my head around is 
I exchanged emails with Mike Morris today in procurement, and this really goes to, to the city solicitor. Under 30B, if we're going to acquire property, you've chosen, according to Mike Morris, the law department has chosen not to follow 30B at this point, and if the council appropriates money, you will then declare this a totally unique property and either reduce the amount of advertising that is required or not advertise. And uh, I have to tell you, and, I, and I've read it, 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 in the case of a proposed acquisition, the governmental body, and I assume that's us, Solicitor Nesrallah, would you say we're the governmental body, determines in writing that advertising will not benefit the governmental body's interests, et cetera, et cetera. This has to be done 30 days before the governmental body executes a binding agreement to acquire the property. The owner of the property and the mayor executed an agreement back in November. Yeah, with all due respect, they didn't execute a binding agreement. That was based more of an option because it's an exception and a condition in that agreement allowing the city to withdraw in the event this governed body chooses, uh, chooses fit not to purchase the agreement. Well, I kind of thought you were going to say that, so I want to look at item 20 in your document that's, that you sent to us, and it says, this instrument executed in multiple counterparts is to be construed as a Massachusetts contract, is to take effect as a sealed instrument, sets forth the entire contract between and among the parties, is binding upon and inures to the benefit of the parties hereto and their respective heirs, the, you know the language, if two or more persons are named, etc., and then it says the only way you can get out of this is if the parties agreed to it. So I, I, I guess, and I get what Carl was saying, but if we need 26 parking spots in that area, why on earth wouldn't we do an RFP? Find out if there's anybody else around there that might lease space to us, provide space to us. The bank-owned building that is Stillman Tire might very well want to cooperate with the city. I don't understand why we wouldn't benefit from at least putting those feelers out and asking people to respond. And then if no one responds, then if you're left with absolutely nothing, then obviously you go on to the next option. But, but we have skipped a step that, to me, would be fundamental. Well, I respectfully disagree that it's fundamental because 30B allows for the exception of uh, uh, bypassing some of the guidelines if you have a unique property. And this is a unique property. Uh, I assessed it after having spoken to uh, several people in different departments to be one uh, that would be highly acquired and sought after and used by the city and therefore having a unique value because not only it's real estate but because, uh, but because of the uh, geographical location that it lies in. This provision exception does not bypass any type of advertisement. After the council approves of this deal, and have me having anticipated you would notice that, there are two other areas in the purchase and sale agreement that states that nothing happens until at following city council approval. Yeah, that's true. So with that city council approval, then <clears throat> if we proceeded, this would have to be advertised in the central register. So it's not completely exempt of any advertising or notification. But again, I, uh, I stand by the uh, advice I had given to Mike Morris because of the uniqueness and value that this uh, property was, is intended to render to the city, I felt we should move on it quickly. And because of the condition that it's in, I thought it required moving on it quickly to preserve the asset to at least uh, ensure safe surroundings of where that is located. Who negotiated the price with the seller? Uh, the price was listed in, I negotiated through um, uh, Stephen Donahue. I tried to bring it down, he said the gentleman paid, um, as you indicated, 150 some odd thousand dollars and he wanted a 10 or 15 thousand dollar profit. Uh, it did not appear to me to try to argue over the 15 thousand dollars was going to be worth losing the asset. Uh, in, the, in the broad spectrum of things in real estate, the $165,000 is not a high value. Point taken that there is going to be remedial work, there's going to be fencing requirement, safety issues, that would be part and parcel if we bought it for $25,000. Yeah. But I still thought because of the uniqueness of that property and its location, 
uh, it was valuable to for the city to acquire with all due speed uh, without uh, cutting any um, necessary edges so that was the advice I rendered I, and I would I would say to you and to my colleagues I certainly respect all of the work that's been done I mean obviously there's been consultation conferences and, and information exchanged I would feel a lot more comfortable if the parking authority were dipping into their revenue and spending a hundred and sixty five thousand but I, I'm sitting here and we have no agreement from the Y. We have really nothing in writing from the Army Corps of Engineers. We have the need for 26 spaces, but it looks like we're going to spend possibly up to $300,000 to acquire those 26 spaces. And I would have preferred that we had declared the property unique, have the city council vote on that. You then come in with the suggested purchase price have a detailed analysis of what we think the engineering costs would be, the site preparation costs, the paving. I have no idea what a square foot of paving costs now. But it just seems to me, folks, and you've heard me say this, I think we sometimes jump without having just basic common sense information that we really should have to make financial decisions. And, and it's not that you're for or against a project, but how do you say, okay, I'll go with the 165 and everything else is kind of nebulous? And once we do that, the mayor has every right, or the Council on Aging has every right to come back and say, well, you know, you already authorized the 165, so you don't have a choice. You've got to go forward. And, and I don't like to be in that position. I like to see things very meticulously spelled out in some type of a one-pager or two-pager. If we do this, we will most likely incur the following costs. Here are the timelines when this could be done. Uh, here are the anticipated maintenance costs. I have no idea what fencing will be. Will it generate any revenue? I have no idea. I'd probably like to hear from Mr. Malley or someone else if we acquire this and turn it into a parking lot, would we generate any revenue? Because that certainly offsets whatever monies might be expended by the city or approved by us. So I guess I've got a lot of unanswered questions a lot of uh, issues for me that just, you know, 165,000 maybe doesn't seem like much, but, but we're jumping without knowing exactly where we're jumping. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I, I thank the people who provided information, and I, I would yield back. If I may just Attorney. make one statement. I, I acknowledge what Council Powell said. I can't disagree with his line of logic. However, this property, and I think it's important to uh, for everyone to be aware, was being marketed by the realtor and by the owner. And there was a concern on my part, and it was, and it was my advice to um, Mr. Morris, that this property could get snapped up under anyone's eyes and it would be gone. And all of this conversation would be moot. So those questions are relevant, but they wouldn't exist if this property was not acquired by us. So I felt we should pull that trigger for in the broad spectrum of things in relation to our budget was rather a minuscule amount to have that uh, piece of property at that location. So I do acknowledge the, uh, the worthiness of that line of inquiry, but I believe was offset by the, the not a rush to judgment, but to, out, to buy it before someone else did. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Uh, Councilor Nicastro. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. You're Good welcome. evening. Stay there. Don't go anywhere. Um, <laughs> First of all, I've got constituents here and we've got a nice crowd from the Council on Aging and so I just want to tell you this past week has been very difficult for me. Uh, since the tax bills came out, I've gotten calls from Ward 4 constituents. They're all seniors and their bills have gone up and they're really worried about their ability to pay them. So I'm slowly trying to figure out how to help them. Um, and that's my, that, that weighed on me, it kind of, spoiled my, my New Year's Eve because I just really care and I treat the money as it's my own. So I'm a business attorney. I'm also a real estate attorney. And, and so I, I'm approaching this as a business matter and I'm, you know, I'm evaluating it as such. Um, this is the agreement that your office, the law department, sent to me. That's correct. I got it in the, in the mail on Saturday. And <coughs> I noticed that it's dated November 5th and it's been fully executed by both parties, right? So it's been around for eight weeks. Well, the agreement was drafted the 5th, yes. Okay. I recall the date it was executed, the 5th. Yeah. 
Well, it says executed on the date first above written. That's correct. Okay. And I noticed that it lists Church of God Prophecy, Inc. as the seller, but I also know from taking a little look at the Registry of Deeds that they sold it last February, and the actual owner of it is New Birth Baptist Church, which That's is correct. a gentleman named Pastor Gene Cherney. Correct. Okay, so this doesn't, re doesn't reflect the right seller. Correct. That was the information I had at the time, and it was provided to me by the broker. Okay. Um, well, let's continue on, because reading this agreement, you know, I do that for a living, and I notice that there's a page missing because we have no paragraphs 14, 15, or 16. No, I had a uh, communication with Councilor Falwell that those were intentionally deleted. Some of this agreement referred to residential purposes, so they were deleted. In the better practice, I would have put down intentionally deleted. Okay. But deleted. Well, I actually, uh, I was just surprised because Steve Donahue was listed as attorney for seller on a page that is here. So I gave him a jingle today, and he is not an attorney, he's a broker. And he told me that, that he would get me those pages. And he said one of those paragraphs has to do with the broker's commission, which is 17% of the sales price, mm -hmm. 17%. OK? And so that really surprised me, because that's a really important term for me as I evaluate this on behalf of the city. Um, y you well, know. We, we, uh, I think we should let, uh, I'll bring out on the table, the broker's commission is paid by the seller. Not the buyer. That's right. So and I don't. If it's twenty-five percent, uh, you know, it's not coming out of, our, out of our pocket. And a smart buyer always wants it listed on their purchase and sales agreement because they want it to be very clear who the person is 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 going to be paid, and who's paying that person, right? Well, not necessarily. It's it's irrelevant to the ends I'm trying to achieve. Whether or not it's the Steve Donahue, if it's seventeen percent or fifteen percent. Okay. Well. This is an agreement that doesn't list the correct seller, all right, and is missing. It's a successor, correct. And is it missing a page, okay? And that's what I was asked to look at. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to tell you, and I don't know who's behind it or anything, but I'm kind of disappointed in the presentation of all this because you're asking us for $165,000 at a time when my constituents are really hurting because their tax bills have gone up. So I'm really sweating these details, all right? And Well, what's the particular detail, Counselor, you're sweating, and I can perhaps help you with it, because the bottom line uh, of the, the effectiveness of that contract, I think, is relatively clear and understood between both parties. So if we want to go through each page of the 15 pages, uh, we can do that, but I think it's understood between the two parties. Well, I don't have 15 pages, so maybe you would well, whatever one amount that I of do. pages there are there. I huh. think it's understood what the uh, contractual intent is between the parties. Okay, well, to acquire that property in exchange for that price. Well, as a member of the organization that's being asked for the funds to to make it happen, it's not understood to me. I think it should have been laid out. I also think no. we should have had a narrative, some kind of something that would explain to us exactly what's going on here. Now, I did speak to a member of the Council on Aging's board today, and the first that that person heard of it was today. I did just speak to someone on the Y board today, and the first that Vinnie Martirano heard about this was today. I just, I, I, I'm just concerned, I'm a, like, it kind of makes me wonder what is really happening here, the way that this is all going, going down. And so I am very concerned about this. I don't feel we have enough information. Um, I don't feel we have complete information, or I'm wondering about accurate information. And so I, I put that out to you. I, I, I think it could have been done better. I, I just wonder what's really happening here. The agreement is to acquire a piece of property for a set price. and. Um that's basically the bottom line analysis of it. I don't think there's anything more complicated to it or um, uh, hidden to it than, than that. Well, I respectfully don't agree with you because I don't know whether, I don't know what kind of a search has been done for this, for, for parking and for property. I totally support the Council on Aging expanding. I totally support the Council on Aging remaining on the corner of Father Kenny Way and Main Street. I think it's a great location, especially convenient to go across the street to the Y and at the end it, it's a good marker for the edge of our downtown area. 
but I want it to be done correctly. I want it to be done all above board in the sunshine, <coughs> and I just wonder what is happening here. I, I don't, I'm not convinced that this property is the only property available for parking. I'm not convinced that you're getting enough parking spaces for what you're spending. Um, and I would like to see analysis, and you're not showing me anything. Well, I didn't have any other analysis beyond that, Councillor. I was given uh, uh, or, or told of this property, it's exi the existence, the geographical location, and I, uh, and I agreed with those whom I discussed that it would be of value to the city to acquire it in relation to the geographical position that it's in, next to the YMCA, the COA, uh, in the Brockton Superior Court. I don't know of any other properties around there. If you suggest that we should have done a full search before we move forward to this agreement, that's your opinion, which I respect. But again, I felt time was of the essence. That property was being marketed. If it was sold, this would all be a moot point. OK, but it's been under agreement for eight weeks. So you know, you're kind of taking your time there. What do you mean? It's, been under, it's under agreement. We have it locked down. Yeah, eight weeks later, here you are in front of us. I mean, it's not that much of a rush, is it? I well, mean, it was a rush. No, I said it was a rush to acquire the property. I didn't say it was a rush to come and discuss it with you. It's a rush to acquire, secure the property, so we could then come before the council. I, I, I'm interested to see more and to hear more. Thank you very much. January 22nd Finance Committee meeting, and all councilors be given an opportunity to create any questions they may have for the solicitor or the council on aging. Um, I hear a second. For, the, for that purpose, I'm going to second. All right. Motion's been made and seconded for the purpose of discussion. Councilor Sullivan? Motion, if I could. Yes. Solicitor. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Phil, quite honestly, the, the fact that a purchase and sale agreement is not in the name, in the lawful name of the entity, there needs to be, uh, between a meeting of the minds, there needs to be a new document or, or it could be a success or an interest, I, but it I, doesn't say it in here. So I agree. before that meeting, what I'm respectfully going to ask, and I, I think kudos to Susan for picking that up, um, there needs to be a modification. Um, you know, the fact that Donnie, who is the realtor, I don't care what the guy makes for commission, but he's not a lawyer and he can't represent himself as a lawyer on this. Can't do it. But the more important thing is, is the, the, the name of the seller needs to be correct. I agree 100%, and as you, you know, Councillor, I'm sure, uh, uh, Councillor um, Nicastro is aware, I signed the agreement. Subsequent to signing the agreement, I conduct a title examination, not prior to signing the agreement. Right. To sign the agreement with the conditions was based on the information the seller through its agent gave me as the name. That would have been discovered once I started the title examination. So. I agree with you. We will amend that so right. it's corrected. Okay. And you're buying it as is, right? That is correct. So you waived all, all inspections were waived? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council so any other? Uh, and that was, that was waived because the intent would be to demolish the building. Right. Motion was made and second on the motion. Council Fowler? I would ask you, Mr. Chairman, if you'd get together with the incoming president and ask for uh, some information on a proposed or suggested or recommended budget total in terms of acquiring the property, demolition, site preparation, paving, fencing, and all other costs so that we'll have something in front of us that will tell us if we do this, this is what the residents of Brockton can expect will be expended. And then I think we'll really be in a position to make an informed uh, uh, decision. Okay. That being said, all in favor yeah, of Councilor Sullivan on the motion. Home. Uh, Kyle, you know I support the Council on Aging 100%. My question is this, based upon the geographic distance from this proposed parking lot to the actual physical structure of the Council on Aging, you'd have to walk up Cottage, take a left on Father Kenny. My only concern is, um, have the, has everybody done their due diligence relative to, to safety of the people that regularly attend the Council on Aging? It's a pretty good distance. And that's number one. And number two, has any further discussion ever been made? I know originally it was, but to see if St. Patrick's would convey or sell any of the parking lot directly across the street. There was discussion with St. Pat's by enlarging their lot, having a fence opening <coughs> inside the parking lot of uh, <coughs> St. Pat's, 
that they would have the opportunity to use it on Sundays. The distance from the wives, uh, ch wives and children uh, facility is just the same distance of walking up the sidewalk without walk crossing the street. Okay. The parking that has been going on uh, since Father Clarity yep. was there uh, has uh, supported the Council on Aging being right across the street and the request was to be adjacent to the bungalow that's on the corner of Cottage and Father Kenny. So the, uh, the question of studying it, it was, uh, there's a sighting board that we've got to follow on under 149 and 7C to choose an architect. We've been very fortunate that BKA, through Kevin Payton, who's the principal down there, has given us schematics, drawings, uh, the uh, deed information on the property was from an engineer over in Northeastern who sold his business. The uh, engineer that bought it has all of the records. Now that's according to Kevin that proves what uh, background is going to have to be required. But we still have to go out to bid for an architect and an engineer to uh, perform the tasks that you're asking to make sure that we have a, uh, a viable program. The fact of controlling that parcel of land is, uh, as the good attorney said, it was paramount to making this project work in a, a short time. You'll recall that I had uh, commented on the fact that in talking with Vinnie Matarano, I learned of the uh, only the management of that property is under the wise control. South Shore Housing still owns the property, but it's financially uh, 2.25 million against an appraised value for the total property of a million four. So they've got to come up with, with details on how they're going to solve the financial strife. So the, the South Shore Housing wants to sell they don't have a clean 21E in the area where it's black mm -hmm. So that there's moving parts. And what we can stabilize is an opinion that it's an important ingredient because we've grandfathered through the engineer's records. We're in a floodplain, but it can be resolved. We can get construction going and the uh, favorability of that one section of road from Warren Avenue to uh, Main Street. Uh, the intent was to show a river walk that tied in to Talia Park from Warren Avenue right up to Main Street because the land would be buffered in that whole distance and the, uh, the size increase is a uh, a very positive move for the council. So, thank you, Mr. Landholm. Thank You're you very welcome. much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council, thank you. Okay, motion's been on the motion, Council Borgard. Did you have anything? Okay. All right. The motion's been made and seconded that we postpone this item to the uh, January 22nd uh, Finance Committee meeting. All in favor of that? Opposed? We have two, three in opposition, I believe. Right? Yes. It goes to the next uh, FinCon for January 22nd. Madam Clerk, next item. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for participating. Madam Clerk. Ordered that the following named sum be and the same is hereby transferred as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Transfer in the amount of $131,900 from ambulance receipts to fire department purchases of services. In order to purchase EMS coats, a vehicle for fire department signal division, to replace the aging dispatch computers in fire alarm, mobile computers, two-way radios, portable radios, to maintain connection to Comcast between fire alarm and EMS stations, and to improve portable radio programming upgrades. Invited Michael Williams, Chief of Fire, Karen Cavall, Budget Director of Good evening, Chief. How are you? 
So this is a usually an annual time when we come up with some costs to, to use these ambulance receipt funds. Um, Deputy Chief Galligan usually is responsible for this, and this is his list of items that we feel uh, we need this year. Second, to send back to the full city council. Favor recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Favor recommendation. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Item number seven, Madam Clerk. Order that the following name sum be and the same is hereby transferred as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Total transfer of $40,000 from fire department purchases of services to fire department overtime in order to pay for the active shooter response training and equipment that happened in November. Invited Michael Williams, Chief of Fire, Karen Preval, Budget Director Finance. Motion made and seconded to move favorable back to the full city council. All in favor of that? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you, Chief. Item number eight. Order that the following named sum be and the same is hereby appropriated as the, as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Appropriation of the total grant funds in the amount of $1,750 from Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency to City of Brockton Emergency Management Agency fiscal year 18 to 19, 2019. Hazardous Materials Emergency Preparedness Grant Fund. This funding will be used to purchase office equipment and supplies to assist with the emergency planning. No match required. Invited Karen Preval, Budget Director of Finance, Stephen Hook, Director of Brockton Emergency Management Agency. Good evening, Mr. Coelho. Thank you for uh, coming. City Council is Happy New Year. So this is just a standard um, HMEP grant that we get for office supplies for planning motion purposes. On, on the motion, Council Rodriguez. Uh, well, uh, Steve, I just wanted to ask you a quick question in terms of um, you said this is a standard grant that you normally get or you apply for. Correct. Is the amount a set amount or do you ask for that amount? It's, it's a set amount set by the state uh, that varies from year to year, depending on how much money they get from the federal government. So this is basically the top? Correct. Uh, the, most amount, the, 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 the most that you could actually get from, uh, from this standpoint? We always ask for the, the most we can get. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Chair. Also. Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Um, Madam Clerk, number nine. Ordered that the following named sum be and the same is hereby appropriated as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Appropriation of the total grant funds in the amount of $20,460 from Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency to City of Brockton Emergency Management Agency <coughs> Fiscal Year 2018 Emergency Management Planning Grant Fund. This funding will be used to purchase a new 2019 Ford F-250 or equivalent. There is a match required on the amount of $19,536.50 from Stabilization Fund $19,536.50 to Emergency Management Fiscal Year 2018 Planning Grant Fund. Invited Karen Preval, Budget Direct Director, Finance, Stephen Hook, Director, Brockton Emergency, Emergency Management Agency. Mr. Hook again. Good evening. Uh, so a little, a little bit of background on emergency management vehicles. Um, when I started five or six years ago as the emergency management director, uh, we had three vehicles. Uh, a 2003 Crown Victoria, which has 180,000 miles on it. Currently it is out of service because it failed inspection. Uh, 2001 E250 van has 164,000 miles on it. It is out of service because of uh, inspection, failed inspection. And our prime, primary vehicle now is a 2004 Explorer, um, which has 121,000 miles on it. And we're starting to have issues with it. Uh, the bigger problem that we have is there are sometimes during emergencies and other non-emergency situations where we have to move equipment around and people and it's difficult to put a large generator or shelter equipment in an explorer. Um, so 
we uh, we have the option we have the option to get this grant uh, again. This was the maximum that they would provide us for this for this vehicle. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Council? Council Fowl. No, actually, I was going to make two different motions: one on the appropriation and one on the transfer. But yes. if I'm reading this right, there are two different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you just funny we used it. Appropriation of twenty thousand four sixty, and then a transfer of. Nineteen five three six point five zero from stabilization. Have yeah, I got that right? Two, should have been two separate. Uh, That's all right. That's yeah. Second. So I, I'll, I'll do the, the appropriation first. Yeah. Favorable. So we're taking uh, motions been made and seconded in regards to the twenty thousand four hundred and sixty dollars appropriation. Correct. Yes. All in favor of that? All opposed. Goes back to the full city council favorable all recommendation. All favorable on the transfer from the stabilization Second. reserve. Uh, motion was made and seconded with the uh, second part of it, the 19,536.50. Uh, motion has been made and seconded and sent back to the full city council. Council, all in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full thank city you. council. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hook. I, item number 10. Ordered that the city council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of the total grant in the amount of $52,000 from Massachusetts Environmental Protection Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Municipal Grant to Department of Public Works Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Municipal Grant Program. This grant will be used to defray the cost of purchasing 96 gallon wheeled containers for the new curbside single stream recycling program. No match required. Invited Karen Prevell, Budget Director of Finance, Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner of DPW. Good evening, Mr. Commissioner. Good evening. How is everybody? Can I? Good. Happy New Year. Yeah, nice. Happy New Year. I was a beach bum for 18, 18 days. I was a beach bum. I just got back Saturday night. He sat Michael. under his palm tree that had lights on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm starting. But, but anyway, Councilors, this is a no match, a no match grant. Um, I've been up here before for these, and we're just going to use this money towards the purchase of the new um, recycled. Second. Motion was made and second to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Thank Close. you. Goes back to the full city. Thank you. Chairman, if I could. Councilor. I just wanted to let people know, because I wasn't aware of this until I went down the other day, but I, I went down to see Pat Sullivan, and I paid $55 to buy a second recycle bin. Uh, there was a, a lot of Christmas presents to Sullivan's this year, so we had to do a lot of recycling. but. Anybody in the city of Brockton could go down there, spend 55 bucks, buy a regular one. Or what Pat Sullivan made me aware of is, if you're a senior citizen and you have the big recycle bin, right, the real big one, they have smaller ones that you can just call the city of Brockton DPW. They'll go to your house, take the big one, and they have smaller ones. About the same size as the rubbish barrel, but it's a recycle. I wasn't aware of that, but it's, it's good information to the general public. Oh, it's like trading in your car. Yep, just like oh, trading in your you. car. Yeah, okay. That's Thank good. you. Thank you. Hey, get a coffee mug Who would I ask about trading in my car? Yeah. Yeah. Item number 11, Madam Clerk. Order that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditures of the total grant in the amount of $3,360.02 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Office of Grants and Research Highway Safety Division, fiscal year 2019, Traffic Enforcement and Equipment Grant Program, to City of Brockton Police Department, fiscal year 2019, Traffic Enforcement and Equipment Grant Program Fund. These grants will be used to pay police overtime to conduct traffic, traffic shifts during the National Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over mobilization running from December 13th through the 31st, 2018. If there is not eight hours of overtime traffic patrol during the DSOGPO mobilization, the grant program's equipment for fiscal 2019 will be forfeited. No match required. Invited John Crowley, Chief of Police, or his designee, Karen Praval, Budget Director of Finance. Favorable. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. Favor recommendation, all in favor? Opposed, goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Item number 12. Order that the city council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of the total grant in the amount of $3,497.40 in the form of 18 car seats from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security 
Fiscal Year 2019 Child Passenger Safety Equipment Grant. Two, City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 2019 Child Passenger Safety Equipment Grant. These funds will be used to purchase car seats valued up to the amount of $3,497.40. There will be no money exchange between EOPSS and the City of Brockton Police Department, no match required. Invited John Crowley, Chief of Police or his designee, Karen Preval, Budget Director, Finance. Council, is any uh, favorable? Motion, motion was made and seconded to, to move favorable to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Ordered that the following name, sum, be and the same is hereby appropriated as the sum was submitted by the mayor as follows. Appropriation of $75,000 from Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation to the City of Brockton Parks Department in order to improve the Danny Goodwin Playground. Invited, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent of Parks, Karen Preval, Budget Director, Finance. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter, how are you? Good evening, Councilors, I'm fine, thank you. Any, uh, anything you'd like to mention or? Move Just take a motion. Oh. Um, uh, was a motion made second. and seconded? Second. Yes. Yes. Motion was made yes. and seconded on the motion. Councilor Azak. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. Good evening. I'm um, Just refresh my memory, which one is, um, the Goodwin Park. Is Danny that Goodwin is East, uh, right East by East Middle Junior School. High. Yep. Okay. Do you what would we improve them? Just mm -hmm. I know there's well, basketball it's courts. It's a little bit of cart before the horse. I didn't want to go okay. too too much, um, you know, without actually ex accepting the money first. Um, but there's um, some existing areas that I think we would like to improve over Proof. there. Okay. Thank you. On the motion. On the motion, council. All three of these that are coming up. Uh, a stupendous job by our state house delegation on these three. Yeah. Uh, in, in a year when there was not much money being given out at the state house for anything like this, uh, our delegation, the three state reps, and our state senator did a great job of bringing back money that's badly needed for our playground. So I just wanted to mention mention the four of them. So just on the motion, though, they left out the one on West Chestnut Street, which we need to work on, and you know which one that is. I wish, they, I wish they had come and talked to me about it before they jumped, but I'll get the money on that one. Don't worry, I've already started to do that. So, But in any case, any other? Council Castro. Good evening. Thank Good evening. you for coming. Mr. Carpenter, I'm just wondering, since you're not sure what you're going to do, when you have a plan, would you come back and inform us of it, how sure. you're going to spend this money? Absolutely. Great. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. On your own little swing, right? <laughs> Any other questions? I swing too. Motion was made, seconded, sent back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. So be Order. item number 14, right? Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask if we could take 14 and 15 collectively Saturday in the form of a motion. Yeah. Motion made, and second, we take 14 and 15 collectively. All in favor? Opposed? Take them collectively. That, yep. this, that the name sum be and the same is hereby appropriated as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Appropriation of $150,000 from Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation to City of Brockton Parks Department in order to improve the Harold D. Bent Playground. Invited Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent of Parks, Karen Preval, Budget Director of Finance. Order that the following name sum be and the same is hereby appropriated as 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 the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Appropriation of $75,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation to the City of Brockton Parks Department in order to improve the Lyndon C. Nelson Playground. Invited Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent of Parks, Karen Preval, Budget Director Finance. Move to recommend favor. Second. On the motion. On the motion. Just want to let the people at home know they constantly, in effect, I have a very active group that wants to call the Harold E. Bent Playground the Ash Tree Playground. It is not the Ash Tree Playground. It is named for a former mayor of the city, a great Brocktonian who still has family in the city, the Harold D. Bent Playground. And Ash Tree Playground is fine. It's, we don't hate the name, but it is the Harold D. Bent Playground and one of the few good Republicans we had in this city. So. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Motion is on the motion. I, I assume it's the same thing. The money's coming in. You don't quite have a plan yet. 
We have a, a little bit better of a plan with Bent Playground. Okay. Um, there is the the large old tennis court area, um, which you know has been in some disrepair for quite some time. Sure. I think we will focus most of these funds on that particular area. Okay. And what about the Nelson? Uh, Nelson Playground again. Um, you know, I think we have some older swing sets over there that are sure. really in dire need of replacement. Sure. Um, there are some uh, some new regulations coming forth with what you can use as a base under yes. play equipment. Yes. Um, wood chips are going to be no longer considered uh, ADA accessible, mm. so we may have to look into doing, unfortunately, a very expensive poured in place rubber underneath those rubber swing sets. Stuff. Yeah. Um, but that's a detail that we're still working out. Okay. Will you come back and, and tell us when you've I got a plan a and update. a budget and all that? Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Motion made and will second to send back to the full mm -hmm. city council with a favor recommendation. All in, pay, all in favor. All opposed. Goes back to the full uh, city council. Um, thank you, Councilor. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Carpenter. And I'll be in touch with I'll be in touch with you guys at the one on West Chestnut Street. Yes. Oh no no no! It, it will be taken care of. Trust me. Trust me, it will. It's a relative to Paul Stadinsky, so I'll make sure of it. Um, just before we depart, um, there is there is uh, somewhat of a um, partial type of list which I will go through with you, President Elect, in regards to a couple of items that are that are still on that have been held. Um, I've held them for some time, and I know one of which is Council Fowl. I don't know where you want to be with the um, creating of parking and traffic commission in the city. We've been holding on to that since spring. I don't know what you want to do there. Um, uh, yeah, we can, yeah, I'll confer with Council okay. Rodriguez. And don't forget, you still have the one with the Cape Verde, uh, uh, Cape Verde uh, uh, Aquaria, naturally coming to visit <laughs> Cape Verde, Martha Verde, <laughs> uh, whatever. It doesn't matter what they are. They're, they're coming in to talk water, but we still have that one there. Um, and then I think there's another one yeah, there. We code enforcement. Code enforcement is still right. Well, is it is it with the ordinance committee as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then don't forget, you have your last. We have a last one too that uh, we put there just to Comcast, and um, you also have the um, you have the Comcast one, and, and your retirement will be sometime in in the winter there, February, March. But that'll be up to the next next person that <laughs> babysits. Uh, to Councillor Rodriguez through you, yes. I did talk with the clerk today, and he said if uh, Councillor Rodriguez could get together with him on committee assignments, they want to get those out before. Okay. I'll be your secretary the way I am with Council Monahan. Well, Council Borgard. Yes, I would like to have moments of personal privilege. Yes, you may. Okay, thank you. All right. First, everybody, Happy New Year, and this goes out here. Um, I just want to say, first of all, I wanted to thank my colleagues for asking the questions about the Council on Aging. Quite frankly, myself, sure, I'd love to see them stay downtown, but if they really need a whole lot of space, there's a few buildings that could be available with a, a lot more parking. First one that comes to my mind is Toys R Us. That's pretty big, and there's an awful lot of parking. In there. But anyway, just, just, just simply saying that we want the best for them and I mean just for someone that walks through that area and cuts through what they're referring to, I mean for me to march around there is fine, but I'm not pushing a walker, I don't have a cane, and those are things we need to consider and plus our wonderful climate, especially at this time of the year. But anyway, uh, there is a police exam information session on Saturday, January 12th at 10 a.m. And this is for the Broughton Police, and if I have it correctly, for the MBTA Police for both those exams, okay? Anyone can come and check it out. To the, um, the assessor's office, they have the abatement forms and information, and you have till February 1st, because a lot of people have not been thrilled with the fact that the values of their home have gone up in, you know, and that coincides with the fact that their taxes go up. So there's an opportunity for many people to take advantage of certain situations. Also, we haven't seen it so far, I'm, I'm hoping we don't see it, but if there's snow situations, there are programs available to the seniors that they can come out and shovel and what have you, you know, consider that. So that's advantageous and um, Council on Aging has that information, 508-580-7811. And I believe that all my colleagues also feel that we're really, it, uh, our superintendent, Kathy Smith, has just been doing amazing. And the situation with um, the challenges tomorrow evening where they're meeting in Lowell, 
New Bedford in Malden on the issue to get you know the, the equal funding for and the fair funding for our schools and uh, they're inviting parents and what have you to make it up there and you know to you know if, if possible in those locations at 7 p.m. tomorrow evening I know it's a lot pretty hard and it's not nearby but again just that um, all this information has been coming out to us and you know for everyone concerned with the situation with our schools and the funding so thank you and just re just remember the the item with the the uh, council on aging that was it was not the mayor that brought it up it was the people of the council on aging that went to him and said they want to stay located where they are so that's why you, you have that in front of you so I just want to get that straight so that yeah I just want to get that straight anything else thank you again for a while what you've done this year thank you Thank you very much. And we'll be back here next Monday evening at 7 o'clock, January 14th. I will transmit the <laughs> gavel, which is my gavel. So when we go to City Hall, it comes back to me. But in any case, anything else to come before us? Nope.